Hey, Peter. Hey. When was the first time that you played Stride Giant Steps? Oh, the first time. It was, um, oddly enough, the last time I did it as well. Yeah, it was both. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you. Today's episode of the You'll Hear It Podcast is brought to you by our beloved SoundSlice. Go to soundslice.com slash transcribe to check it out for yourself. It's something that we use uh, all the time over here at Open Studio. We do. Uh, Even when we're switching our platform here to our lightning fast new platform we yep. still have sound slice available couldn't get rid of it exactly no i mean if we were if we were to even take it away our i think our members would um they would bring a tool to us yeah. which would be a knife and a pitchfork <laughs> yeah like would not be happy. storm open studio so. it's so true but we don't want to because we love it openstudio.com slash transcribe also open studio i'm sorry soundslice.com yep. slash transcribe mm-hmm. also soundslice.com community my little favorite oh uh, it's a good one and also just soundslice.com if you want to jump right into the platform. Yeah, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, so today we have a speed yeah. pipe. We do. Hi, Peter. Hi, Adam. My name is uh, Hongne, and I'm from Norway. And I really love your podcast. It's the best podcast ever. Seven billion trillion stars. You're worth every one of them. Uh, I was wondering if you could do an episode about uh, stride piano. I'm really into stride these days. Um, so I'm, I'm transcribing and, um, figuring out piano parts by, uh, stride piano players. Uh, but I also love bebop and more modern styles, you know, and, and I don't want to become uh, a stride piano player only. I want to do other kinds of stuff as well. Uh, more modern stuff. Um, so I was wondering if, if you have like, any thoughts on how much time to spend on learning the tradition uh, and how much time to spend on finding your own uh, voice? Um, yeah, that would be really cool to hear. Uh, I guess I'll hear it, or I, I hope I'll hear it. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you, Ho- Homia. Am I saying that correctly? Hognea. Hognea. I think. Okay. I was I butchered it, so I was incorrect. But yeah. thank you for that. From Norway. Um, I've said this before. This is one of my favorite. I, I hate to say favorites in terms of countries because that sounds so jingoistic. But Norway is thebomb.com. Okay? That means it's really good. I know. That never, means I like it. Never been there. Oh, yeah. You look so left out. Look I at feel you. I'm just disappointed that Norway's, I. Every, everybody that I respect, like my traveling friends that I yeah. respect uh, their opinions on this, all say that Norway is the bomb. And you know what? It's, of course, in, in, you know, immensely physically beautiful, but the people mm. who are physically beautiful as well, but they're just, they're, they're spirit of the people. They are so kind, so smart, yeah. so genuine. It's, it's truly a little just utopian keep, place. Keep so. rubbing it in, my yeah, man. That's great. Um, but this is, oh, this is a great question. And, and I don't think we've talked about stride a lot. Um, and I think it's so cool to like have a part of the history, a part of the lineage of this music that you kind of are attracted to. Um, stride, uh, ragtime, bebop. These are all just little what subgenres or genres, niches. Yeah, at this point you know. though, they're just all all part of the history of the music and tools that we, you know, need to know almost yeah. as if we're going to continue to push the art forward. You know, right? Um, Pablo Picasso was a, a, could paint traditional realist paintings yes. as good as anyone but could he play stride piano uh, maybe he's a pretty talented dude <laughs> but you know what i'm saying but he took that and made his yeah. own thing and that's how i i see these kinds yeah. of things like okay you don't want to be a, a stride pianist or neither does jason moran but he's taken right. this and made this incredible art out of it um out of elements of stride element of uh, elements of bebop and i think that's part of our job as as artists and really it's the hardest part of being an artist is yeah. is where do you take the history what what people have done before you and push the music forward what do you get from that and how do you interpret it to to something modern and you yeah you know? and i love when it and and i recommend for everybody you know i love when it comes from this place of your 
connection. You might not even know why, like why you were attached yourself to this little part of the music. Like, what is it that attracted you about it? Why, you know, because we, you, you spoke about first kind of that we need to know all these different parts of the tradition and that's true but then once there's one that kind of stands out to you to you yeah. yeah how do you bring that into your mo modern artistry and how does that inform your artistry yeah you know kind of like picasso you know was eternally a modernist but he had these elements of the tradition and he put them through his filter his brilliant filter and stuff and i think that we can all do that and learn from that and i think in terms of like the impetus to use one of these things be it like stride or and these are kind of inexact terms because they overlap i was gonna with say other yeah. styles you know yeah it almost doesn't matter what it is it doesn't and it could be not from jazz it could be not from music exactly you know but these are the things that we pick up that we that we make part of our artistic personalities yeah and, and i think that the impetus being like what you like yeah. like what resonates with you that's the place that it starts with and it doesn't have to be analyzed a whole lot further from that then you just kind of dive in take that and then do your thing with it that's the right. thing it's like everyone has to have a license to it to be attached to this art form and everyone has a license to it and this whole thing of like well you have to respect the tradition you respect the tradition by learning it yeah by by studying it and then that's not disrespecting to take it and, and change it around you mentioned yeah. jason moran i just heard him i just did a workshop with him where we both played some solo piano stuff man he takes the tradition and like He's so connected with it, yep. you know, that he can do things that others might say they are disrespecting it, but he reshapes it and then takes other parts, you know, forms of art and stuff and puts it together in a very individual way, the way it's supposed to be. I he's mean, this not is a mocking it. He's, he's not mocking he's it's, it's pushing a living, it forward. He's pushing forward, and this is a li living, breathing music, and that's what we need. So I think the idea of like, okay, I'm going to be a stride pianist, so there's a set of rules. No you go and learn like how that was done and how to implement that into your playing, but then let yourself go and see where it takes you. For real, yeah, and that's what's part of it. And, and, and Hogne, you mentioned that you, know, you like other, you like bebop, you like other kinds of modern playing. You know, ideally, when you're doing this right, all of those things become part of you and come out naturally, and, yeah. and, it, and it comes out in your voice, yeah. <clears throat> whatever that is, so that there's no disconnect yeah. uh, between, between the, the more modern, things in the more not so modern things even though you know at this point almost all of it is not super modern. i know, you know I what, what I mean? we call modern jazz is it's like in the 60s yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 1960s right exactly yeah. so so keep that in mind and and i always think to you know i know you're influenced by things other than jazz as well they come out all the time in your in your playing and and i i consider those things as I'm crafting my sound as yep. well for me. It's, Visual arts. Yeah. And just poetry. Yeah. You know, minimalism and yep. all these things that, that I care about as an aesthetic I want yep. in my music. And then that's mixed with, uh, you know, things I Herbie Hancock, things I love, you know yep. what I mean? So that's, that's the goal, right? I mean, I think what, you know, one thing you've really opened my eyes to, and I don't even think we've talked about it is food. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you're such a foodie <laughs> and I, no, no, I love food too, but I think that you found a way, you know, your appreciation level, of the art of food and the art of cooking. And I think through your wife are also part-time podcast um, yeah. um, host here. Better than me. <laughs> um, is, you know, you've let that inform your music. You know, you let that inform your composition and like what the possibilities and the forms and all these different kind of things. And that's culture. I mean, you know, sure. you talk about culture, you talk about food, art, people, um, you know, writing, poetry, all these things are connected. And so I think the idea of like how much on tradition versus finding your own voice, I think it's more of a matter of like that's kind of a, a sliding scale because as you're learning, you know, I mean, we're always learning. We know that. But when you're in the earlier stages of your development, I think as a jazz musician, there's more time spent should be spent on studying the tradition sure um, but you're always trying to find your own voice that's not like you have to get to a certain level and then you start to so it's just maybe you're spending less of your time because you don't really know you, you don't have the technique and the knowledge and the and the artist not the artistry but like just the technique to be able to, we've always got that voice in us yeah, yeah. but like you can't find it yet because you need to find that through others in a way and you have to like move yourself up in the tradition first that's right really the, the question that answers this is or the question you need to ask yourself to help you answer this is how am i presenting this in a way that is my own voice right because yeah. you can be a master of stride piano and if you just play it you know exactly like Fats Waller every single time. No. I mean, you're unless just an ape. I mean, a little <laughs> bit like unless you're just like really yeah, you, like, 
like unless you're really that's my statement yeah because i'm going to do a, a two week long residency where i play <laughs> ain't misbehaving exactly at the same time <laughs> right. for two hours a night that's uh, that's an artistic statement right. but really what you need to do is find that filter find the the hongne filter of this is how I interpret stride piano. This is my voice with this. This and that's, is what I bring to the table. You know, and, and realistically, that is the hardest part about all of this. And it, it is. It, it takes is. the most work and it takes the most commitment and the most and, and the most time and patience and courage and a whole mess of yeah. things. You know, so yeah. You, good luck. I think that. <laughs> well, no, I think that the courage part of it is is you have to push out the fear, and we all have this. Like as what happens is as you're learning more about the tradition and actually growing in the tradition, you're realiz realizing how great it is. Sure. So that makes you more feel fearful that what you have to say and your contribution is smaller. So like as you know, you really uncover the layers of this great artistic achievement that's ha already happened in the lineage, it gets you feel smaller and smaller, but you shouldn't, you should feel like you're standing on their shoulders and yeah. you are, yeah, you know, yeah. and so this question of how does the tradition inform our artistry individually, we have to constantly be asking that, like in the practice room, as we compose, as we improvise. For sure. But we're not going to be able to answer that for a long time. So well, you can't be afraid of that. And you're not going to be able to go go on a deep dive of every single era of no. music that's ever happened. I mean, no. you know. Art Tatum never learned bebop. It was fine for him. Right. <laughs> like, it's fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. He had some little kind of bebop -y stuff. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like he didn't, he, he wasn't around for, you know, the electric revolution <laughs> or anything like that. And it's okay. Like, it's, right. it's cool to His kind of organ specialize. Shops were, B3 were not happening, I heard. Yeah. Really? Did did not, he, no, 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 <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. okay to specialize. And then exactly. And then pick the sounds that only, and only the sounds that you actually really care about. Make them part of your sound. And uh, we all want to hear that. Absolutely. For sure. Great. Well, good, man. Thank you. Um, ho, 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 Hognia? Hogne. Hogne. Why yeah. can't I say that? Because I don't speak Norwegian. I, I could be wrong about I that. I love Norway, but that doesn't mean I speak it. No, Norway is the bomb. Um, thank you for this very deep and interesting question. It's a great question. Yeah, and it's, and it's you know, I think this thing of, of how, how does the tradition inform our artistry, if you keep that question, and look, there's no answer to that, but asking that question and us thinking about that, that's the pathway towards artistic development yeah and it's a lifetime thing yeah one more ultimate journey. thing here is you can't also i think the flip side of this is you really can't de define your own voice unless you have some understanding about the history of what mm. you're working with you know Absolutely. what i mean it's really hard to have an original voice if you don't understand anyone else's stuff if we don't know where we've been how do we know where we're going and on that note <laughs> we just want to send you <laughs> to uh, our sponsor for today's episode that's soundslice.com slash transcribe check it out uh it's monday yes and uh, it's not hump day. No, but no. it's a very important day today. Why is that? Today is our producer, Andrew's birthday. Hey, happy birthday, happy birthday. Andrew. And we're not even going to say how old Andrew is because... It's too young? Well, no, no. I mean, he's young, of age. Way younger than he's us? He's of legal age, even in Norway or America, for employment. No, but I mean, he does such an amazing job with this podcast. I know it seems like it's all you and I, and look, we're, we are it's great. It's mostly you and I, yeah. You know, yeah, it is mostly you and I. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I just have to say, I want to just give a big thanks and shout out Andrew. Like, if we say how his age, people aren't going to believe it because they're going to be like, somebody couldn't be that talented and versatile at that age. But he is. And, you know, he's really been a partner with us on this podcast journey. And he's the one that makes sure these episodes are out, but that they're sounding great, that they're looking great. Yep. He's killing it on the podcast game. And so we want to give a shout out and a happy birthday. And if anybody wants to say happy birthday today to him, hey, do it down on the YouTube um, comments. That's Can right. Do it there because he's it. looking in there. I know he's looking in there every day. He's going to see. It. Yeah, so yeah. give a shout out to Andrew, Andrew K, our uh, producer. Oh, and also we haven't mentioned this yet, but we're a few days into this. We should probably get on this. The podcast awards. We've been nominated. Did you know that? What? Yeah, you don't know about this. I don't know about this. Yeah, come on, Andrew. You know about this, right? Yeah, we are nominated for why? Yeah. Um, what? Yes, we are nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award. Why? Well, what do you mean why? We are the people's choice. Well, Ooh. we don't know if we Russ? are. Yes. We're wow. nominated. So we want everyone to go vote. You know why? Because we're very vain and we need self. Um, yeah, vote seven times. Vote seven <laughs> times. Is, are they allowed to? We don't know. We don't go know. on there and vote as much as you can. But go where, where they're going to go is podcastawards.com. Okay? Yeah, so, there, so there's a little bit to do, but we've been assured it's two minutes maximum. We're asking for two minutes. We, we, we give the folks hours. We're asking for two minutes. Go up, sign up to nominate, and then nominate, you'll hear it. I love it. So uh, until tomorrow. You'll hear it. 